Want to trigger a death metal fan? Say you love Corpse Grinder while sharing a picture of Big Ed. Today we are ranking the albums of Cannibal Corpse, and we are starting with Eaten Back to Life in 1990. A landmark debut from one of the biggest bands in the genre to this day, and it actually holds up pretty well going back and listening to it now. The cover was created by horror comic book artist and longtime collaborator Vince Locke, who continues to collaborate with them to this day. Uh, Cannibal Corpse. I'll have to blur this. This is pretty great. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Solid riffs, and I love the kind of buzzing insect guitar sound, especially on tracks like Edible Autopsy. Also, plenty of killer bass rumble and D-beat on Put Them to Death. Strong opener with Shredded Humans, awesome groove on Mangled. It really is amazing to see how far they've come from this, but also, again, impressive at just how strong they were right out of the gate. Definitely not their best or most defining work, but understand that there isn't a Cannibal Corpse album I don't enjoy. They've been incredibly consistent to the point that even the more average releases make for strong listens within the context of their own discography i would say this one goes to okay tier which brings us to butchered at birth in 1991 chris going for some deeper more brutal vocals on this one which i admit cracked me up as a kid when i first discovered it but it's cool to think about just how different this vocal style was at the time nowadays i want a little bit more variety in my vocals but i can appreciate them for what they represent some really great songs on here gutted and vomit the soul bringing the groove innards decay really got the drums and guitar working together like a well-oiled machine meat hook sodomy making for a strong opener with those palm muted triplets i'd say this is a pretty big step up from the debut and a classic in its own right though i will say it's not without its imperfections and lower points as a whole especially when compared to the next two albums so this could go higher but i'm just putting it at good tier but then we have tomb of the mutilated in 1992 <laughs> It's such a meme at this point, but there's a reason why people still talk about Hammer Smashed Face. Like, it was definitely one of the first death metal songs that I had ever heard, and just a masterclass of how to write brutal music that is somehow also catchy. Also, my first time seeing a death metal band going all the way back to my Jim Carrey-filled childhood with Ace Ventura. What an absolute chat. And fortunately, this isn't a one-trick pony either, with other great tracks like I Come Blood and Split Wide Open. Awesome D-beat on Necro Pedophile, we get some thrashier riffs and wicked bass on Addicted to Vaginal Skin. And on that note, this album also has some of the wildest track names in a career absolutely packed with them. If you ask me, this is a huge step up from Butchered at Birth, and easily my favorite of the Barnes era. Pretty crisp production, too, for the time. So yeah, I'm putting this one at... Perfection. This was the last album to feature the band's original lineup with guitarist Bob Rousset being fired not long after release. Which brings us to The Bleeding in 1994. <laughs> This was actually Cannibal Corpse's most successful album to date in terms of sales and also the fifth top-selling death metal album in the U.S. with over 98,000 copies sold. It's also Chris Barnes's final album with the band and the first with Rob Barrett on guitar. Definitely moving into a bit more of a groove-oriented sound and with more gravelly and easier to understand vocals. Mike, you're doing it wrong. I can understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Great opener with Staring Through the Eyes of the Dead and another all-time classic here with Fucked with a Knife. Pulverize certainly lives up to its name, leaning into the faster, more brutal style of the previous albums. Force-fed Broken Glass really putting the spotlight on Alex Webster's bass and Paul's drumming. I also like these slower, more atmospheric moments like Return to Flesh. My second favorite of the Barnes era and a must-listen for any death metal fan. I'm putting this one at... Fantastic. Y'all, if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to hit the like button and comment as you go along. Where do you agree? Where do you disagree? This is all subjective anyways, so let's get a conversation going. But next up is Vile in 1996. <laughs> 
enter Corpse Grinder for his first outing with the band and bringing a lot of new vocal dynamics in tow, alternating the low grunts with raspy highs. It's also their first time tuning down to B-flat standard. The original title was Created to Kill, and it had already been partly completed with Barnes on vocals before he was kicked out of the band. They also changed their band logo at this point to the same one that they still use today as Barnes drew the original one. From a songwriting standpoint, though, this feels a little bit transitional, like they're working out the kinks and where they want to go now with this new lineup. Still a solid listen as always though, favorite tracks on here, Mummified and Barbed Wire, Disfigured, Absolute Hatred, and definitely Eaten From Inside. I actually ended up moving this one down a bit from last time as a few others ended up creeping up past it. It was a B or great, this time I'm feeling more of a good tier for this one. Notably, this was the band's first album to chart on Billboard at 151. Then we have Gallery of Suicide in 1998. This is the first album with Pat O'Brien on guitar, slightly better production than Vial, and I definitely hear them coming into their own when it comes to the songwriting, with more dynamics and use of atmosphere as with the title track. Disposal of the Body and Stabbed in the Throat have some fantastic riffing and fun fast vocals getting technical with some of those woodly woo riffs on Dismembered and Molested. Another fun retro music video for the Chuggy Sentence to Burn, and I can hear them really toying around with their style on Chambers of Blood and From Skin to Liquid. Pretty neck and neck with the bleeding for me, so I'm gonna put this one at fantastic. Maybe even a little higher. Then we have Bloodthirst in 1999. Hearing another significant step up in the production on this one as far as the songwriting goes, pretty dynamic with a lot of different things going on. Love those malignant lurching grooves and carcassy vibes on opener unleashing the bloodthirsty and sickening metamorphosis. Raped by the Beast is an early standout with a wide array of textures when it comes to guitars. Killer bass intro to Coffin Feeder, Ecstasy and Decay has some really cool ups and downs, fun flavor riffs on Hacksaw Decapitation. And as regular viewers know, I love good things that come Come in small packages, so that 34 minute runtime really keeps things pretty sharp and focused. Still not one of my favorite albums from them, but a strong and consistent listen. Nonetheless, I'm putting it at great tier. Which brings us to Gore Obsessed in 2002. Now, I can vividly remember being a kid looking at this cover in the store and just being transfixed and disturbed by all of the well, gore and viscera. The corpse's smile in particular just really skeeves me out the most of all of their covers for whatever reason. Hatchet to the Head is the obvious track to mention here, and it really is among their most memorable in my opinion. Pit of Zombies also delivers on some killer groove, as does Compelled to Lacerate. Fun little guitar break with just the cymbals on that one. Lots of cool riffs on Drowning in Viscera. Love the wailing guitars and backtracking, opening up the pummeling Sanded Faceless. And When Death Replaces Life adds something a little slower and more ominous to the mix. Another really rock solid record, the only reason I'd put it lower is I don't love it as much as some of the others as a whole despite having a few must playlist tracks. So this one is going to good tier. This is actually the lowest fan rated album on Metal Storm with a 7.3, but I don't think that's necessarily deserved. Next up we have The Wretched Spawn in 2004. Now, last time I did this, I was pretty hard on this album, but when we did the Community Bracket live stream, I actually saw a lot of support for this one, which led me to start this round of re-listens with this album. And you know what? Once again, I can admit what I'm wrong. Pretty strong opener with severed head stoning, alternating crunchy palm mutes with some grindier riffs that make me think of Napalm Death. Great use of these squealy harmonics and more technical riffing on psychotic precision, sort of infusing a little dying fetus into the usual corpse sound. Similar notes for Frantic Disembowelment, which really lives up to the first part of its name, while the title track brings some swampy riffs that would have been right at home on Morbid Angel's Domination. Some of those vibes on Nothing Left to mutilate too. Decency Defiled continues to be a standout with its undeniably infectious groove. Blunt Force Castration, in spite of its wince-inducing title, is a total blast. Great doomy, menacing atmosphere on Festering in the Crypt. I previously described this album as forgettable, but listening this time, that just couldn't feel more wrong to me, which is why I encourage people to revisit things. How you feel about something at one point may be completely different a year or two later. Last time I put it at the bottom, this time it's going all the way up to 
fantastic and pretty high at that. Notably, this is the last album with founding member Jack Owen. And then we have Kill in 2006. This is the return of Rob Barrett and the first produced by now guitarist Eric Rutan. This was also the first physical CD that I bought from Cannibal Corpse. I've been listening to them on and off digitally for years, but this was the one that grabbed me enough to pick it up in college, which probably had a lot to do with hearing The Time to Kill is Now. Man, talk about an opening statement. This thing sets the dial at 11 and delivers on that same promise pretty much all the way through. Every single track here is a banger and stupid heavy, more instant classics like Make Them Suffer and Five Nails Through the neck. Murder Worship bringing back the classic 90s riffs with the hammer-on pull-offs and pinch harmonics. Purification by Fire is a rager. The intro to The Discipline of Revenge is super creepy. Maniacal is definitely titled correctly. Submerge in Boiling Flesh is a total barn burner and powerfully evil sounding closer in Infinite Misery. This is their second album to hit Billboard 200 at 170 this time and it is going to perfection. They followed that up with Evisceration Plague in 2009. Now, while some of my opinions have changed on some of these albums, I do feel like this is the sort of redheaded stepchild of the discography that's sandwiched right between two of their most popular releases. And admittedly, I do find this one to be a little bland in comparison, but it's still far from bad. Cauldron of Hate is a good one, solid riffing and pace changes on Carnivorous Swarm, Shatter Their Bones has some more memorable vocal moments, love the bass on Beheading and Burning. Still a good album in its own right, just comparatively, it gets lost in the shuffle with not as many standout tracks to make it stand apart in any meaningful way. And again, you know, my opinion may change with it over time, but right now this one is going to okay tier. But then we have Torture in 2012. <laughs> This album made US Billboard 200 at number 38, which is always impressive for a death metal album. The production on this is like perfect. It's still got that rawness to it, but everything comes through perfectly and there's a nice stomp to some of the slower tracks. And then alternatively, ragers like Demented Aggression and Sarcophagic Frenzy just rip through you. Love that big sludgy intro to Scourge of Iron, even more of that where the slime lives energy. Very technical guitar work all over this thing, but woven into memorable melodies, especially on tracks like Intestinal Crank and and followed home then killed. The bass also getting its time to shine on others like the strangulation chair. And I'll say that conceptually out of all of the horrific topics their songs have covered over the years, as someone who's a bit claustrophobic, it's encased in concrete that has always given me the most heebie-jeebies. One of their finest hours as a band, third highest fan rated album on Metal Storm with an 8.2 after Tomb and the Bleeding tied at 8.3. I'm putting this one also at Perfection. And then, as if that wasn't enough, we have a skeletal domain in 2014. Another big album here, this one also making Billboard at number 32, probably in no small part thanks to the success of lead single Kill or Become. Like over the years, that may have very well become my number one favorite Cannibal Corpse song. It's impossible to listen to it without screaming along to FIRE UP THE CHAINSAW! But really, there's so much more to this album than just that song. So many other scream along moments and just amazing guitar riffs too on tracks like High Velocity Impact Splatter. And another case kind of like on Torture where Every track has its own personality, bringing something sort of different to the table while also adhering to the overall blueprint. I also tend to refer to the riffs on this one as being a bit more influenced by melodic death metal without losing the brutality in the process. More standout moments, the end of Ice Pick Lobotomy is pure fire, there's that wicked extra long soloing on Vector of Cruelty and Asphyxiate to Resuscitate. Then of course there's the title track and Funeral Cremation is a total banger. In my humble opinion, this is sort of their most complete work. Like, I could even really alternate between this one and Torture as my overall favorite. There's not a single second where I'm not fully engaged, which is pretty impressive for a band known for putting out kind of the same meat and potatoes brutal death metal for decades now. So this one is going to the top of perfection for me. Then we have Red Before Black in 2017. <laughs> Now 
Now, I see a lot of people call this album better than A Skeletal Domain, but I just don't agree with that at all, personally, but it does have some similar things going for it. For one, the title track feels like it's written very much in the same vein as Killer Become, once more screaming along with the chorus is impossible to resist. Again, Cannibal Corpse have done an excellent job creating great hooks and riffing that really stick in your mind as with In the Midst of Ruin, Shedding My Human Skin, and Corpus Delicti. Another balls-to-the-wall opener and Only One Will Die and fantastic drumming on In the Midst of Ruin. Scavenger Consuming Death also has this absolutely disgusting, crunchy bass solo towards the end. It feels like a continuation while also channeling some of the more raw aesthetic that define their early works. If you just want an album that is pure balls to the wall, this is not going to disappoint, but I still don't find myself loving it like some people seem to. So this one for me, it's going to great tier. And this is also the last album with Pat O'Brien. Then we have Violence Unimagined in 2021. <laughs> Collaborator and producer Eric Rutan finally stepping in as a full member and guitarist, and man does he inject that same trademark hate eternal sound into the mix here. The first half of this thing is just pure hellfire, kicking off ferociously with Murderous Rampage, and then you get Necrogenic Resurrection, which is one of my personal favorites. Then this album's Killer Become with Inhumane Harvest, bringing that amazing EVERYTHING MUST GO. Unfortunately, the problem I'm starting to see with these new albums is that a lot of the time they're all bold. Bulldozer. While my favorite albums on this list do know their way around a bulldozer, they also know when to use the backhoe, hand tillers, and pickaxes. Metaphor. That said, you do get a little more in the way of variety and dynamics around the second half with the likes of Follow the Blood, Bound and Burned, and Slowly Sawn. Overall, I'd say this one is about on par with the last one, so this is also going to great tier. Which brings us to Chaos Horrific in 2023. <laughs> I did a reaction to single Summon for Sacrifice, and it definitely got me pretty hyped despite generally knowing what to expect from the band at this point. Impressive level of dynamics and more kind of domination era Morbid Angel sounding vibes giving me hope that this album would really step up the songwriting. Overlords of Violence is another killer opener for the band as well with its clanky bass intro, skank beats, and more surprise developments the further you get into it with a really earworm guitar lead and an absolute slapper of a solo. Frenzied Feeding tearing it up while also taking a doomier turn around the middle with plenty of spooky graveyard atmosphere, and then of course there's lead single Blood Blind, which is like wading through a literal swamp of mucky gore. <laughs> Really, every track here has something to offer, so I won't go through them all, but just for a few more highlights. Vengeful Invasion got some similar vibes to Inhumane Harvest, but with some really interesting time changes, and then more great varied rhythms, including some D-beat on Pestilential Rictus. The title track has a rager of a chorus ripe for crowd participation, and then Drain You Empty may be one of their best closers to date, with such a potent portrait of imposing dread. Great song for closing out a show, too. Some albums take a little while to really sink in before I can decide where they fit on the list, but right from the very first listen, I was confident that this was a significant step up from the previous two, and it only got better from there. I do think that the first half is a little bit stronger than the second, but overall, this defied my expectations and did ultimately deliver on the more dynamic experience that I was looking for. So this is going to fantastic. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more death metal rankings, including new ones from Dying Fetus, Cryptopsy, Incantation, so much more. And again, let me know down in the comments how would you rank these albums. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.